summer concerts, pool parties, chill nights under the stars. We're stocking up our closet so you're ready to look your best for all of it. At Plato's Closet in West Ashley and North Charleston, we're buying all things summer. So bring in your tees, tote bags, sandals, sunglasses, and more. We pay cash on the spot for gently loved name brand looks. Plato's Closet is the go-to destination for trend-forward teens and young adults who support local and shop sustainable. Visit Plato's Closet today. Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on Rivers Avenue. People very often ask me both how and why I started my podcasting journey. Well, as an engineer, I'm frankly very passionate about math. I wanted to find somewhere to share stories of great mathematicians from Archimedes to Alan Turing and everyone in between. And for that reason, I want to tell you a little bit about my preferred hosting platform, which is Zencaster. Now, before I continue, this is usually the conversation I have with anybody who is wanting to start their own podcast. I know there are so many people out there with passions that they want to share with the world or unique knowledge that they're just looking for a platform to start with. And uh, Zencaster is a wonderful all-in-one platform. What I mean by that is you can do your recording and your editing and use AI to create a transcript uh, and and, uh, distribute to all platforms, including Apple Podcasts or Spotify or anywhere else where podcasts are played. For anybody like me who might worry at first about what you might sound like on an audio recording, Zencaster's post-production process makes you sound really, really smooth. It automatically removes any of the ums or ahs in your recording. It removes any of the awkward pauses and conversations, and it also helps you to set the right podcast loudness and levels while reducing any background noise all with the click of a button. It couldn't be easier. Go to Zencaster.com forward slash pricing and use my code breaking math and you'll get 30% off your first month in any Zencaster paid plan. I want you to have the same easy experience I do for all my podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story. As a child, did you ever have a conversation that went as follows? When I grow up, I want to have a million cats. Well, I'm going to have a billion billion cats. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm going to have infinity cats. Then I'm going to have infinity plus one cats. That's nothing. I'm going to have infinity, infinity cats. I'm going to have infinity, 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 so many infinities that they're infinity, infinity is infinity plus one cats. What if I told you that you were dabbling in the transfinite ordinal numbers? So what are ordinal numbers? What does transfinite mean? And what does it mean to have a number that is one larger than another infinite number? All this and more on this episode of Breaking Math. Episode 55, Order in the Court. I'm Sophia, and this is Breaking Math. With us, we have on Diane Baca, who is an educator in uh, the Albuquerque Public School Systems, uh, teaches math, and also happens to be my mom. Uh, And I did not introduce her proper last time. I was just like, this is my mom. Uh, Welcome. (laughs) Thank you. I'm happy to be here again. Uh, So before we start on this episode, I have a couple of plugs. Um, If you want to buy our poster, um, facebook.com slash breaking math podcast is where you can buy that. Uh, Just click on shop. Uh, The poster is uh, $15.15 plus $4.50 shipping and handling coming to a total of $19.65 anywhere in the United States. If you want to donate to the show regularly, we have a Patreon at patreon.com slash breaking math. If you donate a dollar or more, you can have um, episodes without ads. And we also even have outlines that we use for the show. If you want to spend $22.46 there every month, you could also get the poster, but that'll be more. You could get it cheaper on Facebook, but where's your loyalty there? If you could also find updates about the show on Facebook. We also have a Twitter at breaking math pod, a website, breaking math podcast, App and a sister podcast, Turing Rabbit Holes. So this episode is about the transfinite ordinal numbers. What do you think about that? Um, I know the only word in there is I know I know lots of like parts of that number, but I know ordinal. Put them in order. Um, transfinite means what? Um, across infinite um, uh, or across finite? Yeah, across the finite numbers. Basically, an infinite number. And the dif- there's actually a difference between ordinal numbers and cardinal numbers um, when you get into the infinities, which we're, we're going to talk about uh, cardinal numbers on the next episode. Uh, this is part one, basically. But um, ordinal numbers are, let's say, I mean, let's say you have like a collection of things. A po- let's say you have an infinite collection of things. Let's just say you have a million, na- like an infinite number of names on a list. And uh, you have them all numbered from uh, one uh, one onward. And they're unique, right? Yeah, and they're they're all unique, or at least they have a unique address. Um, if you add, let's say you add 
one to that, like one new name to that. While while you could reorder them and uh, say that they are... Uh, um, well, is that one that you're adding? It's one more than the one before. Yeah, and it's distinct. And and you could order them basically the same way because that could be the that the that could be the new number one. The the old number one could be number two. The old number two can be three, and so forth. But if you want to compare, if this item is distinct, you can refer to it as kind of like the infinity of plus one address. It's when you have a collection that's already infinite and you're adding one to it. So, so that makes no sense to me. It makes no sense to me because infinity to me means without end, right? And so it seems to me like it would be immaterial to add another number in there because it's already there anyway. Like in other words, it's just... Basically, that is when you're talking about cardinal numbers, and I'll explain the, the difference real quick. Cardinal numbers display, uh, are how many there are. Ordinals are where they are. Oh, so we're not talking about... So when you were talking about names, we're literally not talking about ordering the numbers we're literally talking about unique things yeah like let's say like um you have jimmy bob and he's number one and got then it. you have mohammed he's number two i got and then it you have pluto and it's number three got you okay i i was thinking this was like one two three four five Oh yeah, I mean one, two, three, four, and five are ordinal numbers, and they're also cardinal numbers because you can have a set, you know, like a collection of things with five things in it. But once you have an infinite number of things, like for example, let me use the example before where we have the infinite names and then we add one to it, right? Right. Okay. The address of the new thing can be considered like the infinitieth plus one address, but the total number of things in it is still uh, just the same. Uh, infinite just the same infinity because cardinal numbers is about the size of sets and ordinal numbers are about addressing sets giving each place everything a unique name so for in, in the example before we have everything numbered uh one through um infinity infinity and then we add an another item to it and then if we compare that list the old list to the new list we could talk about this in terms of ordinal numbers Okay, but they're still both infinity. Yeah, they have an, they have the, an infinite number of things in them. However, uh, if you want to, if you if everything already has a unique address, the only un other unique address you could put tack on is infinity plus one. So what what doesn't make? I guess maybe why I'm struggling with infinite. The concept of infinite, even if you had an infinite unique, I mean, to me, if you had infinite unique addresses, then that would mean that there is no end and there is no size of set you couldn't talk about the size of the set because it is infinity it goes on forever and ever and ever and ever so you see what i'm like maybe my brain is more concrete well, let, to talk about this maybe we should talk about uh the infinity hotel first and then we'll talk about omega because oh there's God. some concepts we have to cover <laughs> infinity hotel i feel like you did this when you were like 10 or 11 and you tried to get me to engage in this concept and I remember being pretty resistant because I just wanted to know what I was cooking for dinner anyway <laughs> I, re I remember uh, I, re yeah, I remember being at McDonald's and writing a stack of infinities on top of each other but I was wrong because that is not um, rigorous and we'll dive right in <laughs> okay let's do it let's say that somebody has a hotel let's call it the infinity hotel and it has a lot of rooms in it it has an infinite number of rooms okay now it let's say people show up right you could put person one in the first room the second person in the second room and then so on okay now let's say you did this forever okay essentially and all the rooms are quote-unquote full right yeah now let's say well, wait there's empty rooms aren't there on uh no we're saying we're we're, we're assuming that we filled it all up it took an infinite number of time. So it seems like in this case, it almost sounds like infinite is finite because as if there's an end to it. Actually, yeah. It, it, what's cool about the transfinite ordinals is that you can use them to uh, prove really cool properties about finite numbers. It's kind of weird. Like um, we're going to talk about bases in a sec, but um, I'm sure you're loving this episode. <laughs> Actually, it's okay. It pushes me. It's good. I, I like it. So your question about about like it, it is a valid question like how can an infinite number of rooms get filled up and we have to kind of go to the concept of um limits uh, in a way uh for that so at, you know you, you know like a uh, limit in calculus right um it's like as x approaches infinity one divided by x uh, approaches zero okay so, yes and what, what that basically means obviously is that um if if you keep increasing the value of x there's going to be a 
there's going to be a number that it approaches. We could pick that number out without having to go through an infinite number of steps, but we theoretically have gone an infinite number of steps. Okay, yes, yes, yes. I get that. Okay. So let's so let's introduce the concept of omega to talk a little bit about the infinity people. Okay. Now, what omega is is Let's say we start at one, right? I mean, start at zero, whatever. Zero, one, two, three, four, and so on, right? Mm -hmm. the, the idea of counting just, it, it, because remember with the limits, it's a real number that we're talking about. So we could go, we could go like 2.5 to 5 to 7.5 on our way to infinity. Sure. But here we're just going zero, one, two, three, all the way to infinity. Okay. So the basically the term and so on can be used to go from one level of infinity to the next. So let me give an example with the number of people. So let's say the hotel rooms, uh, the hotel rooms are um, numbered, right? You're numbered one, two, three, and so on, right? Okay. Basically, the address of the quote unquote last person there would be Omega. And of course, there wouldn't, there is no actual Omega, but Omega is this concept of speeding along counting for an infinite amount of time. Okay. Okay. And, and you can imagine, and you can imagine this take after taking an infinite amount of time, the hotel, and that's why maybe the infinity hotel is cool to mathematicians and can infuriate some other people. Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, but, but what's cool about it too is that it also describes how um, these infinite these infinities have the same cardinality, and I'll explain. So let's say a bus full of infinity people arrive at the hotel, right? Okay, got it. How do you give their them new rooms? Um, what do you mean? Yeah, how do you give you mean like? Uh, well, let, we already got omega rooms. Yeah, know, like, right? well, yeah, and they're all full. So you have to add something to that omega. Well, yeah, but we can't add new rooms. The hotel is done. The contractors are gone. They're mad at us. The one infinity is as much as we can do. Uh, well, it's not as much as we can do, but as much as as, as many as we have, we're 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 working with a hotel that uh, it's in a historic register. You can't alter it. Okay, <laughs> okay, I can live with that. All right. So let's what do is, we do? Yeah. So you have like you know Jim Bob in uh, room one. You have Mohammed in room two. You have. Do we have to put two people in a room now? Um, no, actually, no, everybody has to have their own room. Oh, and here's one of the rules. Uh, the, the, you can move people from room to room. I can move people to room to room. So how about I, but I don't have enough, I don't have any more rooms because otherwise I was going to say, hey, just move them down the line and then you add the new people in. But that doesn't... actually, let's go with, I, I forgot that um, the first example here is not a bus of infinity people, but a bus of like 30 people. Well, that's easy. You just put them in the 30 rooms. Yeah. Yeah. You, you have everybody move up 30 rooms. Oh, you're talking about the, we, we've already filled. We're already at the Omega and now we've got 30 more people. Yeah. And here's the thing. Here's the weird part too, because the amount of rooms is infinite. It's, um, we can actually have everybody, including the last person, move down the quote unquote last person who doesn't exist, move down 30 um, rooms. So we make 30, we make room for 30 in the front. Yeah. But let's say the, and, and if, if every person that comes along, we just, we, we're the worst hotel in the world because we keep telling everybody to move rooms. But um, <laughs> yeah, every time somebody arrives, everybody moves to the next room. That would suck. Okay. It'll be, it would be like that scene in Alice in Wonderland. Please. Move down, move down, move down. Then I still have a down, move down, move down, move down. <laughs> but um, so a bus now comes with infinity people because they're from an infinite festival. Okay. So now you have infinity plus infinity. But how do you move everybody down an infinite number of rooms? I don't know. You move them omega. I don't know. So you can't actually move them omega because omega is about an address. Oh, and you can't really move everybody an infinite amount because of rooms because uh, because you can, you have to give everybody a direct address to go to. So you can't tell person one to go to room infinity plus one because that room in a way doesn't exist. OK, but but didn't we just do that when we added the 30 people? We added we, we added 30 people, but they had the same cardinality because it's the card be the same number of people because if you already have an infinite number of people um it's the same thing as the it's the same concept as the, the why there's the same number of numbers and even numbers there's not more or less even numbers than numbers and you might think that there'd be half of them 
Okay. My mom is doing an explosion uh, motion with her head. There's no more numbers than even numbers. Okay. Yeah. So like one, two, three, four, five. There's there's the same amount of numbers like that as there are even numbers or numbers that are a multiple of ten. Simply because you can keep going up. Yeah. Is you count you count them to infinity. Okay. Uh, So this is definitely a mind. Yeah. yeah, But um. That's my my definition of something that's hard to understand. A mind. (laughs) Okay. But uh, yeah, it's um oh yeah, but what I was going to say too is the reason why the the even numbers are are like that is because if you count the even numbers, the first even number is 2, the second even number is 4, and you keep counting and you keep counting to infinity so that numbers are there's the infinities are equal. However, there's way more, but weirdly enough there's the same amount of fractions as there are numbers okay. because you can because the fractions you could order them. You could do 1 then 1 half then um, one third, then two thirds, and then one quarter, then two, then uh, three quarters, and just keep going like that. Okay. And you could put, you could write out every fraction like this. But back to the Infinity Hotel. So okay. a bus of Infinity people arrive. How do you assign them all a room? If you have a loudspeaker, you don't even have to do that. But um, how would you do this? I have no solution because if we can't move them down and if Omega is not really something we can do like Omega plus Infinity or whatever it is. Well, we can move people down as long as we know where we're moving them to. Well, we're at uh, we're approaching Omega, correct? O- Omega Infinity or whatever. Here's a hint. What I said about the same number of even numbers as uh, natural numbers applies to this. So it's the same number of rooms? Uh, yeah, the, the number of rooms doesn't ever change. So we have enough room for them? Oh, yeah, we definitely have enough room for them. So now we don't. We don't have. So even though we have somebody in every room now, suddenly so we have more rooms. Yeah, well, the re, what, let me give you the solution and then maybe in the next one will be. Um, l- l- Please. What so, is the solution? What you do. What you do is you get on your loudspeaker and you tell everybody, All right, everybody, double your room number and that's your new room. And then you assign everybody who comes in an odd room number. What? That feels like a cheater way. (laughs) Infinity is full of this. (laughs) Say you haven't just changed their room number. Yeah, because that's like moving them down. Okay. So now let's say... So you basically just created new rooms. I mean, you didn't, but you kind of did. Well, we didn't. we, We didn't create any new rooms. We just had every. We just found, we just found a way to weave the people we already have into the rooms that we have. This sounds like infinity times two. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> and, and actually, yeah, because if um, let's say that you, if you have um, the, uh, 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 like the Omega people in the hotel, we could say that the set of the people in the hotel, uh, like combined with the set in the buses, is two times Omega. Okay. But um, once they're all. Um, renumbered together. It's just Omega again. Yeah, it's just Omega again. Okay. Uh, so this these these are weird numbers to use. So now let's say that the, it's a festival, right? It's a re- it turned out to be a really big festival. So now here come infinity buses, each with infinity people. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we gonna multiply the room number by infinity or something? <laughs> Actually, no. In this in th- th- this one, it's kind of hard to solve, so I'm just going to give you the solution. Okay, good. Do that. What you do is you tell everybody in the hotel, okay, listen up. Uh, what you do is you get a list of all the prime numbers. And one, one cool property of the prime numbers is that a prime number to a power is never going to be equal to a different prime number to any other power, right? Right. Because like you can't factor it out by definition. Sure, sure, sure. So what you do is you start with the first prime number, which is two. And you tell everybody in the hotel... Raise two to the power of your room number, and that's your room number. Now you take the first bus and you give them the second prime number, which is three, and you tell them, okay, first person off the bus, you do three to the uh, first, second person, three squared, and so on. Okay. And third bus, you do that with five. Fourth bus, you do it with seven, and so on. So now, every, every prime number. Yeah, and everybody will have a unique number at this point, right? Right, for sure. Now what you do is you tell everybody, okay, your new temporary room is the number that you just wrote down. And it inc- and of course there's going to be a ton of empty spaces, but um, basically you can tell everybody at the next p- point. Okay, everybody just move down uh, to the next uh, empty space. Uh, if you have an empty room, and then everybody will shuffle that way. This is crazy. And also, you know this hotel better this? be free. <laughs> Do you know who came up with this hotel concept? Uh no, let me look that up. Oh, Hilbert actually, I didn't know that. Hilbert's paradox of the Grand Hotel. Do you know Hilbert? Yeah, Hilbert's dope. Uh, Hilbert, <laughs> he is dope. He's like a logician. Uh, he fought a little bit with Goodell. He lost, but he still had a lot of cool ideas. What time frame? Like early 1900s. Okay. And yeah, so that's the Infinity Hotel. Now, this Infinity buses, each with the Infinity people, that is like Omega squared. 
because it's yeah, omega okay. times omega. Okay. And like if each one of those uh, infinity people had a cell phone with an infinite number of contacts and each di- is, is different from the other, the number of contacts could be described by omega cubed. Oh, wow. Okay. And what's, what's good about these omegas is that we can compare them directly because omega squared is less than omega cubed. Right. Omega is bigger than any natural number. Omega times uh, any natural number that's bigger than any other natural number uh, times omega um, is uh, bigger than that number. Oh, that's weird. You're taking something that's very hard to understand to understand very simple, like very like numbers in a way. Like oh yeah, like I mean numbers numbers themselves are pretty remarkably abstract. I mean the place value system. We spent a whole episode just describing how weird that is. I mean how cool it is, but it's weird. Right. I mean, we just have, we have 10 squiggles and we use them for everything. It's amazing. As we said before, if you count zero, one, two, three, continue indefinitely, that continuing indefinitely counting describes omega. Yes. And so true omega is kind of like two copies of the the numbers next to each other. Okay. Like zero, one, two, three through infinity and then zero, one, two, three through infinity. Okay. I can accept that. Three omega is three copies. Sure. Omega squared is omega copies. Okay. Okay. Now, super quick, let's talk about what omega to the omega would be. And omega to the omega would be is if you had an omega times omega times omega, omega times. Wow. And that's not even the biggest omega. There's also omega to the omega to the omega to the omega to the omega. Isn't that what you just said? No, no, no. I just said omega to the omega. There's a stack of infinite omegas. Omega to the omega to the omega. Like, just keep going. Like, If you have every collection from one, two, three, like you have a set with one, set with two, set with three, set with omega, set with omega plus one, set with omega squared, set with omega to the omega to the omega, and every number less than it, that, that even though omega is always countable, that set is itself uncountable. Yeah, yeah, okay. That makes sense to me. I know that, I mean, it sort of does and doesn't, but I get it. I think I get it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's uncountable in the same way that the real numbers are uncountable. Right, I understand and that. And the real numbers are uncountable because, like, uh, there's, n- there's no way to put them uh, in order, basically. Okay. Like, you're always going to, yeah. One cool thing about the transfinite ordinals, and it's something that I think that we should do a quick proof sketch of. Um, we're, it's not really a proof sketch. It's more of a convince ourselves it's true kind of thing. What's a proof sketch? A proof sketch is like a lazy proof. Oh, okay, got you. But uh, it's not even that, really. It's more of a it intuitive a, It's just a thing. thought process kind of thing? Yeah, because I, I, on the next um, problem episode, I want to cover how this is done. It's a thought experiment. So basically, what's mm-hmm. surprising about the, about the ordinals, right, is that if we, have a, if we start at, at any ordinal number, right? Okay. It could be, it, it could be 100, 30. Whatever. It could be omega. It could be 100 omega, sure. whatever. Okay. If it starts there and it decreases, strictly decreases. Okay, we can the, count it. Yeah, it's always finite. Right, that makes sense. And I'm just wondering, how come that makes sense to you? I think because we're counting backwards. Like, so we basically started at some place and we're counting backwards. So in my mind, it makes more sense. Yeah, because like, let's say, let's say, let's start with, like, let's, say, let's say we start with omega, right? Yeah. A number less than omega has to be a natural number. Yeah, so like it exists. Yeah, and yeah. then once we're at that number, whether it be a million or 37 or 286,543, it's a finite number of things. Okay. So let's say we start at omega plus one, right? Okay. Got Same you. difference. It goes omega plus one to omega to whatever. Right. Um, and uh, even let's say we even start at like three times omega, right? It's still the same because you still could backtrack it. Yeah, because you got to go to two times omega plus some natural number to be less than three omega, right? Exactly. And then that goes down to two omega, and then that goes to omega plus some natural number, or just and some natural number. And then we'll get number. back to omega, and then, of course, then, okay. Yeah, and basically that's the whole concept of it. And uh, what's interesting is about is that using this concept, we can prove a uh, property of the natural numbers that is impossible to prove using without using infinities. Okay. Um, and that's Goodstein's theorem. So Reuben Goodstein was an English mathematician, uh, and uh, he he was just a logician. He was like a, a logician. Um, he what was cool about him is that he um, he studied uh, the, our friend the Ackerman function, but he oh, also <laughs> that's so funny. I think the same that actually makes sense to me. People that would delve in this would obviously be interested in the, all that fun, those functions we were talking about. I know it doesn't actually make sense what you're saying, but it totally makes sense what you're saying. 
<laughs> but I don't actually know why it doesn't make sense. But it just it's, it seems like it's not a cohesive train of thought, but it definitely makes sense. Yeah, I think it's just because it's delving into these concepts of infinite and enormous. Yes, exactly. Okay, yes. Let's talk about piano arithmetic, which you've covered on the show before. Piano arithmetic is basically saying that there's a few um, there's a few rules in piano ar- ar- arithmetic. Basically, you, zero is a natural number. That's a definition. The de- definition number one. Um, every nat- every natural number is equal to itself. That's definition two. Uh, if you have two numbers, if x equals y, then y equals x. That's definition three. So it's symmetric, uh, equality wise. If you have x, y, and z, and x equals y and y equals z, then x equals z. Basically, it's kind of the same stuff that um, Euclid did. Actually, kind of doesn't that kind of it just sounds like real numbers. The difference between those two is that is uh, it, it, we haven't defined any number besides zero yet. So uh, it just sound- yeah, you're right. So it more sounds more like Euclid. Yeah. Okay. That makes yeah, sense. Like basically congruence, the idea of congruence yeah, versus. Exactly. Yeah, like th- like likes subtracted from likes are like and things like sure. that. Sure, where you're not actually naming E values. Okay, I got gotcha. Yeah, or like things that coincide are equal, that kind of thing. Okay. Um. So now. Uh, but this is piano? Yeah, piano arithmetic, P-E-A-N-O. Okay. He's a, he was an Italian logician. Okay, and you're going to bring that in to talk about transfinite ordinals? Oh, well, th- th- this this system that I'm describing right now, it's impossible to prove the theorem that we're going to talk about in this system. So l- let's say that you have some number A, right, and it's equal to a natural number B, right? Okay. It must That means that A is a natural number. Right. Um, that's a, another definition. So they're b- pretty basic. For every natural number, the successor to the natural number is a natural number. So we define the term successor there. Okay, sure. The successors are equal only if uh, the num- if and only if the numbers be equal. Sure. And the successor of any natural number is not zero. Sure. Uh, because natural numbers start at zero. So right. those are um, the definition. And also it, uh, the last definition is a definition of induction, basically saying, so the, the, the induction theorem basically says that, like if I want to prove that every domino falls using induction, I say, I, I pu- push over the dom- first domino, oh, no- okay. knocks this over the second one. Oh, okay, this is just another property of this. Okay, of this piano, whatever. Yeah. Sorry, I couldn't remember what you said after the piano. Piano arithmetic, is that what you're saying? Uh, oh yeah, and super quick for the audience, induction is uh, when you, like if I want to prove that every domino will fall down then i prove that the first one knocks down the second one so you kind of have like if you, the first one you can label that zero um so zero is in the set k of dominoes that, that uh fall down and then if some no- domino falls then the next one is going to fall so that's the second thing that we know and using those two things and the the axiom of induction we could say that all dominoes fall sure 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 you're inducing it. Okay, I got it. Yeah, and so that has to be defined um, in piano arithmetic by either sets or predicates. Um, predicates is uh, predicates is actually a little bit easier. So a predicate is like a test. So if the test for zero is true, and for every natural number, the test of n implies that the test of the successor of n is true, then the test is true for every natural number. Okay, yeah, I can accept that. So... Goodstein's theorem happens to be a theorem that you cannot prove in this system, which was not discovered until the 70s. Um, piano arithmetic was developed in the early 1800s. And you're saying that the theorem wasn't discovered? Or late 1800s. The theorem wasn't discovered or the fact that it couldn't be proved? Well, I mean, it, okay, so the history of this is actually kind of interesting. So in 1879, uh, he uh, came up with all these axioms. And then in like 1911, I believe it was, uh, Goodell released the Goodell Incomplete- Completeness Theorem uh, saying that basically any system of axioms will have statements that are true within the axioms but cannot be proven with the axioms. Okay, okay. So basically every system is either of axioms is either incomplete or inconsistent. And uh, Is that Goodell's theorem? Yep. Okay. And inconsistent meaning uh, would would mean that you could prove anything to be true or false. Um, it, it's more it's much more uh, useful for a system to be incomplete because then it's at least consistent. So then basically in the 1970s somebody came up with an actual theorem that you cannot prove using piano arithmetic. Oh, okay, okay, and that's where this comes into play. Yep. So basically, let's say. So to do a good scene sequence, let me, let's just show what a good scene sequence, how to do it is, right? Let's say we start with a number 10, right? 10 is the first number of our good scene sequence. Okay. That's a two cubed plus two, right? Yes. And now two cubed has the number three in there. And we're trying to get rid of anything but uh, twos and ones. Sure. Three is two plus one, right? So you have two to the two plus one. Okay. Uh, plus two. 
Um, and uh, so now let's say we, for some reason, replace the twos by threes. There's no reason to do this, but let's do it. Okay. Uh, and then uh, what we then what we do is we uh, represent it in uh, base three hereditary uh, representation. Hereditary representation is like the only use the base or the number one. Okay. Uh, so uh, so the number three to the three plus one plus three because that comes from two to the two plus one plus two, right? We start with two to the two plus one plus two, correct? Two to the two plus one plus two, yes. And then uh, and then we've replaced the twos by threes. We get three to the three plus one or three to the fourth, right? Plus three, which is eighty four. Uh huh. Now, if we convert that number eighty four into uh, into a hereditary base three notation. And then we keep doing that base three, base four, base five, base six. Okay. The question Goodstein uh, asked is, do these sequences terminate? Which sequences terminate? And it seems like it wouldn't, right? It seems like it would just get bigger and bigger, right? Well, okay. So if you're taking the twos and then you replace them by threes and then you take that number. And, and then you convert that to hereditary base three notation. So... Um, and then what do you do from there after you convert it to hereditary? Then you change that three to a four? Yes. And, and then you and, the, and each time you subtract one as well. Um, so, um, it, it's a very contrived example and it's famous for being contrived. It's also very just, okay, contrived is exactly a good word for it. Never mind. I was trying to think of the word. Um, yeah. So basically what you find is that these sequences always end. They do? Uh-huh. And the reason, and the way that this was proven was he replaced the twos with omegas. Oh, okay. Okay. And then he proved that each time you and then you replace the threes with omegas, then you replace the fours with omegas. Okay, got it. And then he proved that this sequence is strictly decreasing. Oh my goodness! And since really? it starts, yeah, and since it starts at a um, ordinal number and it decreases strictly, then it's finite. Then it's finite. That is so weird. That's weird. So basically, he used this concept of omegas with the infinite hotel rooms. <laughs> yeah, he used this bizarre concept to prove this bizarre theorem to prove that piano. Uh, was was not as good as math is. No, I was kidding. No, it's not about that. It was just about proving. So basically, it's a way to show that Godel's incompleteness theorem applies to piano arithmetic as any other system. It's just mm -hmm. a confirmation of the fact or a concrete example. So constructivist mathematicians would probably like it a lot. It's still really cool. I mean, it's really, really cool to think that you use something that's a very hard example of understanding all the omegas and whatnot. And once you get that, then you prove that something is finite. I mean, that's kind of... Oh, kind yeah. of crazy. And the weird thing about this good scene sequence, too, is that you can do it in piano arithmetic, right? You can calculate each number using piano arithmetic, but the theorem itself cannot be proven within piano arithmetic. Which is true to Godel's theorem, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, then there you go. Ordinals describe collections of things that may be infinite by labeling them. Thus, we know where many is infinity, but how many is infinity? The answer, and a better way to phrase the question, on the next episode of Breaking Math, all about transfinite cardinals. This is Sophia, and this has been Breaking Math. With me, we had on uh, math teacher uh, Diane B Baca uh, from APS. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. It was fun. Anything you want to plug? Uh, no, thank you. Yeah, and uh, any uh, reflections on the episode? Um, Just that... It started out super frustrating. I mean, in, in a way, it's very, very like it's a mind game. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, and I feel like it it was kind of cool where it ended up and that something so, so, so frustratingly, you know, like or not. I shouldn't say frustrating. That's probably a bad word, but something that was kind of so abstract ended up proving something so so real and concrete. Yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah. mean, as as concrete as uh, as good steam sequences yeah, can be. Yeah, there you go. Right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Thank you for being on the show. Grand Canyon University makes earning your degree possible with over 130 academic programs for traditional campus students with more than 80 bachelor's programs offered online. GCU provides you with the personal support you need from complimentary unofficial transcript evaluations within 24 business hours to scholarships, academic support, and your GCU graduation team led by your own university counselor. Find your purpose at GCU. Private. Christian. Affordable. Visit GCU. See you.edu.